Welcome back now to Joe Biden's tax plans. The Tax Foundation finding that the five and a half trillion dollars in new taxes that President Biden is proposing in his seven point three trillion dollar budget. Well, those tax increases will cost the U.S. nearly eight hundred thousand full time jobs, reduce economic output by two and a quarter percent and cut wages by one point six percent. Biden's budget increases the corporate minimum tax to twenty one percent. It quadruples the stock buyback tax. It raises the corporate income tax to twenty eight percent and he is implementing a 25 percent billionaires tax if he has his way he's also adding higher fuel taxes for people with private jets joining me right now is south carolina congressman ralph norman member of the house financial services rules and budget committees congressman assess the president's tax plans he's telling us what another four years would look like what's the impact well, it's going to be a tremendous impact, Maria, on, uh, at every sectors of the economy. You know, in South Carolina, we, we're a growth state. We have businesses moving here. But uh, what he's doing is, is pretty much derailing this economy, and he's done it the three and a half years he's been in office. You know, and uh, capital gains at 28 percent, the regulations that he's putting on businesses, uh, we can't take it anymore. And so this is a real, Mike Johnson is going to ha has a big decision to make uh, in the next five, six months. Is, is he going to let the Democrats continue this, or are we going to stand up and fight? And I hope we're going to fight. Well, that's <clears> definitely <throat> the the issue at hand for the House right now. But look, when you're looking for money, and he needs money to pay for all of his uh, climate change agenda plans, you go where the money is. So how is he going to spend, how is he going to pay for all of the spending that he wants to do? The way he's going to pay for it is higher taxes, and uh, he's going to pay for it by continued deficit spending. Uh, and, you know, and I can't stress enough the importance of and the harm that the regulations are doing to every sector of the business. I'm in the real estate business. I see it. Uh, and it's just going to further put this economy in decline. And we cannot let him continue to have his, his agenda. Uh, with, with what he's doing. And I don't know, um, like I say, Mike Johnson's got a big decision to make. We either fight or I guess just surrender to him. So let's talk about that fight because I know what Marjorie Taylor Greene is doing. She's uh, outraged that there is a conversation about more aid to Ukraine right now uh, when the border is still not secure. The Speaker Johnson says uh, lawmakers will vote on Ukraine funding once they return from recess. The bill is expected to provide money to Kyiv in the form of a loan. The White House claims that it will consider, or reportedly considering, ending Biden's pause on liquefied natural gas exports in exchange for Congress to agree to more Ukraine aid. Is that the way to go? No, it's not the way to go. Um, the fact is, you know, for him to say that he wants more Ukraine funding with Chuck Schumer, uh, Mitch McConnell, this has been a, a key part of what they what they've been saying for a long time to to have the aid. Now, uh, if there are no offsets. Uh, if they're not concessions made to pay for this, more borrowing is not the answer. And that's where Mike Johnson is going to have to step up, use the leverage he has as Speaker uh, to get concessions if and let a standalone bill come before the House and uh, let the House Republicans decide and get unified on it. But it's just not more spending on it. The $95 billion that was in the two minibuses, uh, and it was spread out with, with Israel and other countries uh, in addition to Ukraine. But when's this train wreck going to stop? And it's up to the House to do it because we control the, the purse strings. Well, I mean, does the Speaker really have that, that much leverage, Congressman? I mean, let's face it, you're hanging out by a threat in terms of the majority. Mike Gallagher just left, and now you're going to have a one, or is leaving, and you don't have any opportunity to do a special election, so you'll be having one vote in terms of the majority. So I think what I hear you saying is, uh, People are watching Mike Johnson right now. I mean, Marjorie Taylor Greene said, look, she's not going to push the issue as soon as you get back, but it's like a pink slip. He needs to start getting tougher with the Democrats. Is that where you are here? Or do you actually see an opportunity to push for a new speaker as well? It's, it's no, not right now. I mean, here's what we have to do. We have got to not accept, as an example, the thousand page document that we received and have 24 hours to review it. Uh, we cannot keep just borrowing and saying that this is okay, give the Democrats all the pork barrel spending that both Republicans and Democrats took advantage of. Uh, so he's got to get the Republicans in the room and get a consensus. Uh, the majority of Republicans did not vote for this last spending spree. 
And uh, Mike's got more leverage. We have got, you know, a two-seat majority. Yes, it's close, but we still have control. And either we're going to function uh, as, as a House and put it back on the Senate uh, to try to get some sanity back in this with, with our budget. Yeah. Mike can do that if he will, and I don't think it's time to vacate right now. Right. Okay. So we'll be watching that. Let me get your take on how the people feel or the donors feel also. President Biden's campaign is going after Nikki Haley voters now in the swing states. They've got new ads talking to those voters. Congressman, I know you had endorsed Nikki Haley, but now you are backing Donald Trump. Do you think that Haley supporters <coughs> would be open to going toward President Biden, or do you think they'll endorse Trump? Look, Donald Trump is our best hope. It's between President Trump and Biden. Look at the train wreck Biden has put this country in. It's not even a choice. It's, it's President Trump now. Uh, I, I hope man, all the Nikki Haley supporters will come on board. I did it right after she conceded, and I think Nikki would agree. It's time for all of us to get behind Trump. He's a nominee. Look what he did the four years he was in office. Uh, it, there is no question now that Donald Trump's a leader and get behind him and forget the past. Politics is a blood sport. But now we've got to put the country above partisan politics, and I think her supporters will come on board with it. Yeah, him. well said. Have you spoken with Nikki Haley? Is she going to endorse Trump? Uh, she's been on vacation. I spoke, uh, texted with her actually yesterday. Mm. So I, I hope she, publicly she will come out and okay. say that. I urge her to do that. All right. We'll be watching that. Congressman, it's good to see you this morning, sir. Thank you. My pleasure.